Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to create LinkedIn carousel posts automatically, which is really useful for everybody because carousel posts typically get the most amount of engagements on LinkedIn. So if you're looking to enhance your social media presence, this is an easy way to use your pre-existing content, put it into a template that you have, and then what will happen is it will either turn that into a photo post to upload completely automatically, or it will save it as a PDF in your drive or your Airtable for you to post manually. Now, the reason this can't be fully automated is because the LinkedIn API doesn't allow for posting of PDFs, which is normally how a carousel post is done. So the next best case solution is to create that PDF, put it into an Airtable with the suggested copy to go along with it, send you a Slack message to say, here, here's the link, it's ready, and then you can just copy paste, post it into LinkedIn very quickly. Or you can say, I'm okay with a photo-based carousel post and it will get updated automatically and posted for you, okay? So we'll take a step back and we'll describe what exactly is happening here. First, we have an Airtable which is looking for the content that I've created. So in my case, this is get a recent video. Um, if you follow my YouTube channel, then you should know. And if you don't follow my YouTube channel, please like and subscribe, very, very important. Um, it gives me motivation to keep on making videos like this. Uh, so now that I've got that promotion out of the way, what was I saying? Yes, uh, if you follow my channel, um, then you'll be aware that pretty much all of my content is video based. I don't write a lot of blogs, I don't make a lot of ebooks, I don't do um, any of that stuff. So basically, when it comes to my content, I'm creating the videos, and then I want to make a LinkedIn carousel post based on the video. So I have a pre existing automation, takes those YouTube videos, and then grabs the uh, transcript. So I have this set up in an Airtable. So for example, you might remember a little while ago, I did a video called running my business according to what my custom GPTs tell me what to do. And in that case, actually, uh, one of the things they told me to do was to create a, uh, an automation uh, for with LinkedIn in the subject line. So this is what's happening here. So uh, I have uh, the video from Loom and what it does is it automatically grabs the um, the, uh, the SRT, so the transcript. So I have that in my Airtable and then depending on the status, we come back to the automation and it will find that video in that SRT. The next step is to put it into my custom GPT. Now you could just use normal AI for this, that's fine. I use a custom GPT because I have an automation which updates and deletes files that I find important to run for my uh, my fake digital employees. And one of those is an example of my writing style. So my most, my most successful LinkedIn posts, how I write blogs from previous blogs I've written, you know, things like this, my, my tone of voice to keep it authentic. So I asked my custom GPT, I created a new assistant, my chief content officer. And every time I make a request in the file ID here, I ask it to use that to inform it on what it's doing. But again, that, that, that's just overkill on my part because I'm trying to experiment with a, a, new, a new project that you'll be seeing a video of later on. In any case, the main thing here is, here's a transcript of a video I recorded, and then there's the transcript. In your case, it might be, here is a blog I've written, or here is an ebook, whatever, whatever the content, whatever the prompt is, that's entirely up to you. But the thing is, I'm telling it here, I'm making a six part LinkedIn carousel post, so I need you to summarize this content into the six following sections. So in my template, I have a title, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. And then there's a seventh page where it's just, you know, like and subscribe. Um, again, if you're not liking and subscribing to my YouTube page, please do, because it does make a difference in terms of how often I make these videos and how motivated I am when I'm talking, uh, whether my energy is high or low. So yeah, please, please t tell your friends, tell your, tell, tell your family as well, why not? Any case, I have the I have all of the uh, the various um, variables I might need here according to my template. So text one, text two, text three, text four, text five plus a title. I add in some extra house cleaning rules. You know, don't use quotation marks, don't use the stars. Here's a little tip: when you go on LinkedIn and you see someone's LinkedIn post and it has uh, lots of these asterisks around where a title would be, that lets you know that AI wrote it because OpenAI does that a lot. Uh, I tell, I give it the word count as well. Uh, I tell it what the general gist of the video should be, some more housekeeping, title page, and most important as well, I tell it, separate each piece with a dash, dash, dash. So again, if you've seen a few of my videos, you know, instead of making separate calls to OpenAI to get different variables, I just do it in one call. I ask it to separate with a dash, 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 so then I can use a text parser that identifies the texts before and after a dash, 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 and then I can just map that variable in one operation. So the next stage is where to put this information. So for example here, uh, I have the content, I have my text, I have my value, which you can see here. So this is giving me all the things. The text pass has separated this out, running my business with a custom GPT, non-techies, a chief focus, blah, 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 blah. And I've mapped it to something. But what have I mapped it to? So most people, when they get started, they're using something like Canva, which means you're going to have to pay money to use it. And it's not automated. There's no API. There's an SDK. Um, I'm not going to go into that because my, my, my channel is mostly aimed at beginning, beginner to intermediate. Um, but essentially, you're going to be paying for a service where you have to do manual work. 
I want to do it automatically. So my workaround is to use Google Slides. So you'll see here within my um, Google business account, I have created a template. What I do is I create, I, I, I create a template, I come to file, I go to page setup, and I change the pixel number to 1080 by 1350, because this is what LinkedIn recommends for, um, for carousel posts. Um, I have a Figma where I have all of my different design elements that I use. So in this case, this is, uh, I guess this is a hexagon. What's the one with six? Pent, hex, hexagon, yeah, this is a hexagon with uh, rounded corners. I have uh, a text file, I have a little photo. And as you see here, I've replicated this. So I have a title page, point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, and then an ending page. Again, not a great ending page because I haven't finished making this yet. This is just to show you in the video. Follow me for more quality information. Again, I've already said it. Please do follow me, like and subscribe. Please share, please comment, connect me on LinkedIn, send me an email, I don't care. It's good to have feedback. But <laughs> this is what you do. So you create your page and for each of the texts on the page, uh, in the text box, you enclose it in a double squiggly bracket. Okay, so what that does is it tells it tells Google this is a variable field. So when we go into the make automation, it will replace this text with the one that we've generated in, in, in our custom GPT. So you create your template with your title, your ending, and however many pages you want. Okay, and we come back into make. So again, in my case, I have. Um, six variable fields. I also have an image that I'm going to vary, but uh, I won't go into that. Um, but basically, yes, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, title, point one, point two, point three, point four. I map it to the text parser. Um, if you're in your particular template, let's just imagine you have only three pages, then you simply just have to delete this, this part here, the reference to a seventh page, you change that to a fifth, you change it from six sections to four sections, you change the text parser from six versions of this down to four. You just update it according to your specific needs. Um, but yeah, we're using Google Slides. So then what happens is it will create the Google Slide. So here is an example. Yeah. So here's an example of what the output would be. It's mapped the title, it's mapped uh, some, some text, it's mapped some more text, it's mapped it all. As you can see here, I might want to work on changing the font for future versions. I might want to put in some more images or something like that. That's all up to you. This is design stuff. I'm not a designer, I'm an automator. But you can see here, we've created essentially what is a carousel. Okay, so, so after that, we have a module here which searches for the same file. The reason for that is when this gets created, it won't tell you what the folder, the folder ID is or the presentation. It'll give you the presentation ID, but I want things like the web view link and the content link. So I have to search for the file one more time. I just use the information, the query, the title that it's created. So for the air table and update it. Okay, we have here some extra modules where I'm getting social media content and Gumroad posts. You can ignore this. This is part of some, a different project. The main thing here is the Google Slides to Google Drive. So now I update the air table and I update the table with my, um, with the WebView link, okay? Because for me, I just want to grab it. I'll download it manually, add it. If you want. And now you have it saved as a PDF, so you can, so that now you have it in your drive, just download it as a PDF, or you can export it. You can create an API call to Google. So if I add in a module here, I'll do Google Drive, make an API call. Um, I'll put in the URL as slash v3 slash file slash the file name. Oops, that's not the file name. Uh, so file ID slash export. And then the query type is mine type. Uh, and then PDF, what is that application slash PDF? Press OK. All right, I need to get the um, I need to get the file name ID. We run OK. And now we have the data here is a PDF. So I can upload that directly to wherever I need it to be. Um, again, you can't use uh, PDFs to upload automatically to to LinkedIn, so I would save that PDF somewhere. You know, honestly, what I would do, what I actually do is I just save the link to the Google Drive. Click on the link when I get a Slack message, download as the PDF, copy and paste it into LinkedIn. But if you wanted to have the actual PDF stored somewhere, then that's how you do it. You make an API call to slash version three, slash files, slash your file ID, slash export, mime type application, slash PDF. It will get you the data. So you just need to compile that using another tool into your Airtable or your Google Drive or what have you. Um, if you wanted to do it as an image, so the only way to do this totally automatically is a lot more complicated. And I'll be running you through a video on that sometime in the, in the next week or two. 
But essentially, there's no easy way to export Google Slides as an entire image. So what you need to do is you'd use the Get Presentation module to get the ID. Of a, of in that, that would return you the individual pages. You'd iterate that and then get those individual pages exported as thumbnails, which gives you the image. Then you would have to collect all of those images together in the same URL or the same file so that when you come to LinkedIn, you can download it and map the file names would post automatically. Again, a bit more complex. I don't have a lot of time for this video, which I'll show you how to do it in the future. But in the meantime, to resume, in conclusion, um, number one, like and subscribe to my channel, please. It's very important. Conclusion number two, um, when you have um, a content dispersal system, so in, in previous videos and in my course, I teach you how to use one piece of content, you know, create text posts, create photo posts, create videos, create podcasts, all of this. You can now also create LinkedIn carousels. You just need to add this to that particular chain. Um, conclusion number two, or well, I guess three, three and a half, whatever, I've lost track already. Another conclusion basically is to draw is we can use chat GPTs, custom GPTs. If you upload it with a file of your writing, things you want, it will closely monitor it or mirror it. If you're using a transcript as well of your own words to create that content, you're gonna have a lot more success. And then you can add it all into a Google Slides, which means you don't have to pay for an extra tool like Canva or Figma or whatever. You just create a template there and it's all good to go. And then from there as well, I'm creating the social media content too. So the copy that goes with the carousel, you can use um, another trick here I use actually, because this is also creating um, posts for other stuff, but I use the thread ID from the earlier one. So it's using the information I gave it before, my transcript plus my writing style. Um, and then basically I'd use it in the same thread, hey, now you created the carousel, please give me some copy for it. Works very well. Same principle, you can either use OpenAI or you can use your customer system. And then the only failure of this system so far is that I can't find out how to export PDFs from, um, basically not how to export, but how to import PDFs to LinkedIn via API. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's possible from what I can make out. Nobody can do it. So it's not an entirely automated system. You still need to manually take that PDF, copy and paste the copy you've created from Airtable, put it into LinkedIn. There is a workaround, which is to export the PDF or the slides as images instead, but that requires a lot more steps that I'll go into in another video. So. Please, I hope you enjoy it. Leave some comments. Thank you for your time.